Gentlemen, we are back. It is I, Tomato. And yet again, I am back after a very, very long wait. I am finally finishing up the follow-up tutorial. Now, this is the very in-depth one. This is going to be an hour, 45 minutes long. So, just strap in. And let's prepare as we go through. First thing you'll notice is we have version up here. This will always vary. If it says unknown, it either means that you have a pirated version of the game or your files are bugged. So that's good to know. Up here, we have a selector. It allows you to select almost any language you want. And if you go to the Discord server, you can even find additional languages and translations. Over here, we have a new feature where you have multiple biomes instead of just one. You have mixed, which is all of them, desert, winter, and grass. Desert is the plain look, as you see here. Winter, the ground is just white. There's nothing special. And grass is there's just a bunch of little 3D grasses sticking up, and the plains are green. Next, we have the distance driven. As you can see, I spent a lot of time in this game. Now... For those of you using mods, there's a mod called Spawner. For the Spawner mod to work, you have to have this number, say at least a thousand. And if it doesn't, well, you're sort of screwed, because it won't work. Next, and you have a little button here to reset it. Next, we have our options. Hunger and Thirst is a new feature, so you have to drink stuff and eat food that you can find laying around if you want to survive. It's like a bunch of other games, Fallout 76, uh, Red Dead Redemption, etc, etc. Next you have Peaceful. Now, recently this has been introduced after the winter update of last year. Now, it adds these rabbit looking mutated things that are very hideous. If you have Peaceful selected, they will not attack you. If Peaceful is off and looked like that, well, then you're sort of, if you're not prepared for it, you're screwed. Next, after we've explained the Peaceful now, and the killer rabbits that will get you at any cost and can only be killed via an explosion from one of the propane tanks, shot from the revolver or shot from the BB gun, what are the next two? <coughs> auto clutch and auto shift. Auto clutch is pretty self explanatory. It automatically does the clutch for you, so you can just shift up or down. Very simple. And auto shift does the whole spiel. Personally, I do not endorse auto clutch and auto shift because they do not work well with a lot of mods. Therefore, for the time being, I recommend keeping it off and learning how to drive in the manual transmission configuration, which very simply consists of holding control and selecting a key numbered 1 through 5 for your gears and R for reverse and it's very simple because you just hold W control and then you press the button to select which gear you want then you let go of control and there you are off to the races and then you just hold W control the next number blah 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 uh, it, it, extremely simple should make perfect sense next you have hash notes over here which is explainable over here you have real time uh, 24 hour clock now spawning in this game operates off of a clock signal so you get a new starter car every 10 to 15 minutes and it's always randomized based on the time after that, we have a link to the Discord, where you can sort of find help. It's become very toxic, especially with mods these days, and so it's not that good. Mainly just stick around if you have any real questions or need of mods for the game. Next, you have the exit button. Something that says development build. Sometimes it has that, sometimes it doesn't. They add it in with every update and stuff. Then you have all the special 
little sliders. You have everything that tells you what you can do. You can have a forest texture, blah, 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 blah. These are just visual things. This is, if you want to select fun little things, it's... If you have a powerful PC, I recommend just keeping everything about standard. So, it's over here. Well, you may see that that's blacked out. But you can add a custom radio. If we recommend using OGG because it's the most compatible format with Uni, which this game is made in. And you can select that, and then you go to FM 99.2. So, over here you have more stuff for all clicks and all shelf. You can use a steering wheel. So simple. You can also use your controller, which then binds the steering wheel stuff. I recommend using a steering wheel over a controller, because I mean, just playing with the keyboard is a bit better than the controller, in my opinion. Then you have the simple self explanatory reset punch and then a player character customization or, or machine. And it's just purely self explanatory. Very simple. Kind of moustache, shoes, it's, 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 it's absurdly simple, uh, you get the point. Now we have load, and you can name the saves, but you can also import saves by going to the said destination and saves, but yeah, they have seed. Now what you do is you just type in a seed, or you can press random, if you not press enter, it goes straight to start. Now, we've done the main menu, so let's get into an actual game. To do so, let's randomize the seed, and press start. Now, wait for the loading screen, and you will see there's a lot of things here. Now, a very common question that is asked is, what is this? Well, this is the moped engine from another vehicle that is in the game. And on the corner of the screen, you have all your controls. The rotate is the middle mouse button. You have to push it down. Very simple. If you pick up something, you can hold F and throw it. But, uh, so that. Here's the food. You can pick it up and you can press U to eat, like it says. You also have cigarettes. And you just, well, smoke it. And if you don't have a cigarette, and you remove it by pressing X, so keep that in mind. Of course, I'm not very good at playing video games, so I, of course, oh. <laughs> That's the whistling function. You do that by holding control and scroll wheel. So yeah, very, very self-explanatory. Combustible can of propane. Bed that's movable. You have giraffe and back here. There's something fun that they hid. And you can open this door using just left mouse button if you're not crouched or in uh, any special modes. And just hold control and W to get down here. And just wiggle your way in using the control arrow wheel and combination of other buttons. And you'll find this, the revolver, which you can then equip and, very simply, shoot. Now you can reload it. This was not possible a while ago, but now it is. And we'll get to that eventually. And then for now, you just gotta really work with the scroll wheel and controller to get out. After that, you have the Commodore 64 and the TV. This is self-explanatory. E our left mouse button. Now you can type, so we have a mode on here called piano, which you simply do by typing in piano. And I think that's the right connect. Not directly. I can't type, so. So, theoretically, you put piano and then you can play with the keys. Now, to stop, you press left mouse button again and you're out. Then you can turn it off, turn the TV off, and you can pick these things up. 
Now recently, when you shoot the TV, it explodes. This is also useless, that also explodes when you shoot it. And this is the radio. These you can have in your inventory, and they will still make sound. Simple. You have these bottles, which can be full of almost anything. Now, over here, is where your car will spawn. Now, simple. Now, there are a wide variety of cars, and this current car that will spawn for us is the Vaz, or Lada, 2105. It features a four-cylinder, about 70, no, 65, I think, horsepower, with a radiator. Well, this is what the engine will always look like. Radiators can vary in condition. And the thing is, you cannot clean them. Did you hear that screech? That was one of those bunnies. Probably trying to kill us. So yeah, you've heard literally nothing. I can now figure that out. And here we have some Jizonet. Yes, the naming is ridiculous. Yeah. I usually play on peaceful for that reason. Over here you have the paint and you can tap F, equip, and color the car. Very simple, right? Very simple. Over here you have the jizz in it. For somewhat good condition paint like this, you just spray it on a few times. It gets better. Like doors, hubcaps, mirrors, the lot, etc, etc. To go into this fun little mode where you can just zoom around with your mouse, press Q. And to get out, press Q again. Over here you have some attachables. So that's simple. Then you have a gold bar. And dumbbells which are used for weight distribution stuff. Over here you have a metal bar which can attach to your car and make some pretty cool contraptions I must say. Uh, with some mods those can be turned into turbos. And up here have stuff for the Halloween update. So you have glowing pumpkin man head. Now you have to maintain these. You gotta fill them with oil, water, and depending on what car you have, if you have the car that has the engine in the rear, your fuel tank will be up here. If you have the car that has a fuel tank over here, it's probably the Lada 2101. Then there's another car with no fuel tank because it's a two stroke, and that and the fuel tank will be right there. That you need a mixture of 97% gas to 3% oil, and it will tell you the percentages. Now over here on the 2105, the fuel tank is over here. It's very simple to fill. And you can play with the bodies of the dead rabbits for some very fun, interesting physics. Over here you have the BB gun. This is also self-explanatory. Pick it up and you switch to the next inventory. You have the beads. Go back to the gun using 1 and 2, 3 and 4. R and you pull your mouse back. Tilt so like that. You press R again. Pull your mouse forward. And now you can aim and shoot. Very simple. It's unequipped. Just tab and F. Self-explanatory, right? Over here you have some oil and some more oil. That always spawns the start house. Under here you have watering and gas. Well, water and gas. I'm not very remember. So there you are. Down here you have the basement. You have alcohol and in the other room diesel. Recently they changed the textures for these. You have the rubber wife 2000, I believe it is. You have another attachable down here. Little bug. And over here you have an allude to the main mod of this game, Rundin, that was put in by this game's creator, Jenez. Over here is a bus room, which we will be showing off later on a bus. Now, like I said, before you leave, you really want to just hop up the car, which consists of hitting F, picking up the gas canisters with the water, and putting the water into the radiator by pressing E to open the cap and holding left mouse button when you see that little filler symbol. Then you just drop and you're good. Then you get the gas, tab, and just jump around if you can't fit. Press E to open the fuel tank door and just fill it up. Takes a small while but after a while it just it just is what it is. You can repair tires by spraying jizz in it on them. And you can also repair hubcaps and stuff, and 
If you have a hubcap on, you cannot remove a tire. You have to take it off. So yeah, very simple. Then you have oil, which is very self-explanatory. You refill it like all the other things. It doesn't need to be much more detailed than that. But now we go on to the more confusing parts. Up here is just a bunch of Easter eggs, some more things I can show you up here. Climb is pretty much shift, control, and space a lot. But after that, not much. You have water, which isn't it? A trophy going to the first player who had ever reached 5,000 kilometers, which is the end of the game. You open your garage doors usually. If you want to escape, here. You go open the door with left mouse button. You press E to sit, and you press E to lower the handbrake I'm looking at. Close the door, hold I for ignition, and since we're in manual mode, we hold control reverse, which is R. Like I said, just hold control, I, start it up, and that's it. We are in the car and start it, control, I, like I said before, just hold W, wait till you hear the rest crime, reverse, R for reverse, and just, and then just, oh well, I've crashed, but just hit one, keep holding W, you'll just pull away. Press tab to center your head, and you're off. Control 2, just while still holding forward, and you're off to the races. Just use, do uh, use your uh, A and D keys to steer. And, uh, it's pretty explanatory from there. The red marks tell you about when to shift, but, uh, another... Let's go on back to the house because there's something very important we forgot. Because you can press the arrow keys at any time and look at your inventory. And usually when you leave the house, there's one thing that you want to grab. That is a siphon. And that is very useful for when you come across other vehicles that you may want and then want, therefore want to transfer the fluids from. So you sort of need that also. So when you need those fluids, you have that siphon hose, and that's what. The, and so essentially, what you do is you just connect one thing to another, and I'll show you how. But you have to be very careful with the siphon hose. You usually find it hanging up around here, and as you can see, since we were exploring around, it's moved itself. And this is a very useful tool. For example, if we were to put it here, we can take this barrel, like so, just drop it on the ground. We can open the top, F, and when you see that, press F. Now we can take this oil carrier, rotate it, and drop it very close, open it up. F and do that, and now it fills. So you just just usually leave in three or four. You just grab it like that. It's very useful. And pretty much when you leave, you want to fill up your car with as much stuff as you have. That's important, like BB guns, spare tire or two in case you crash. Plenty of the jizz in it, and there's also a sponge in here because when you crash, it'll leave red blood on the dashboard, and you can just scrape off the blood by equipping the sponge and uh, just washing around. So I'll show you how that works. So if we were, let's say we were recklessly driving. And if we were to go up to speed. And let's say well, it's about the speed that you crash in. I'd say probably about second gear, 80 kilometers an hour. See how that happens? Collisions also have it where you can have issues and stuff will fall off your car. So it's somewhat realistic. And if you're holding something, you want open the hood E and the mouse button moving. And that's that.
But now, since we have a sponge, in our inventory, we can just scrub a bunch like that, and the blood will come off, giving you another chance at crashing. If you, let's say you, for the sake of entertainment, we're going to do this again, twice, but the difference is, we're not, we're not going to clean up the blood. So we're going to get up to speed, and then we're going to crash into a health pole. And we're not going to bother to repair the car. That was interesting, usually you die. So well, let's try that again, because that was obviously a dud. Hello. Uh, we lost plenty of parts, and if you press C, you can see an expanded view. So we obviously didn't hit it in the right spot. Shift into second to pick up some speed. Try this again. Yeah, no problem. It's really weird. But we've lost a few things. So, to be honest, I'm very confused as to why we're not dead. We've lost almost all steering. Fun fact: you can pretty much drive without that. And if you want light, you just press L. And it well functions like a normal car light. There are some rabbits. They hate the sound of the engine. So they won't attack you when you're driving. And we've lost the wheel. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, if we were to exit back to the main menu, we can try that again with peaceful on. Now let me show you. Ah, yes. This is the Skoda 100. Rear engine and fuel tank is over here. See? So let's try crashing again so I can show you how the death physics work. And you know that you're dead. You can also use space terminals, the handbrake. So R, hold I, tilt idles, W, release control, spin yourself around, hit one. And usually you can get good enough at it that it's very simple. And simple to spin yourself out from around the garage. To be totally honest, guys, this is uh, very rare. Usually, you die very, very fast. And this is a new experience for me. If you want to leave your car, you can shift into neutral. Control. N or control. Weird. I assume. Uh, it's a very weird bug, but yeah, we're, we're in neutral. So I don't know what's going on. This game can be very buggy sometimes. See, look, this wheel fell off with the hubcap on, so we got to remove the hubcap to put it back on. And as you can see, look, that's the radiator for the Skoda. And as you can see, it's in pretty bad shape. And you cannot repair the radiators. Okay, something's not right here. Game is acting all funky and I can't figure out why. Sorry, please excuse the weird brokenness at the moment. Maybe we just need more speed? I guess, because the Skoda is very slow compared to the 2105, so that might be it too. Um, be careful of these rocks, because they can send you flying up into the stratosphere very randomly. Maybe 120 kilometers is enough? Oh, and you also know it's not a dominant. You can zoom into something by pressing Z. And it you know, zooms in your view. And that yellow digit at the end is point kilometers, not full kilometers. So we're not at 10 or 12 kilometers, we're at 1 point, etc. kilometers. Now that we're about to speed, I think we can be able to crash and die. Yep, see, there we are. That's what we wanted. Those are not going to be able to because we've lost a tire. Usually I just take hubcaps off. I don't care for the show of them. So, that's something I would probably recommend is if you're not going to get them up 100%, just take them off. Because then if you crash, like the 
they do technically, according to the code, allow you to have a bit more leeway when you crash or hit a rock with them coming off. But I found that really, it just makes it harder to put back on. And doors and stuff do actually affect weight, so if you want to, theoretically, you can rip them all off. Put more weight, you can press Q and you can hold Q and zoom yourself up, and then just dismount the hood. Now let's go to since it's rear engined. Your time. Now just warning. That stuff is a mesh, so it just stays everywhere. So you really need to scrub a uh, sponge to get rid of it. And as you can see, uh, I didn't have it mounted in correctly after that crash. This is one of the things that can fall off. But it's just. And we're out of gas, it appears. Or, nope, we just have no radiator, and so we've overheated. Which is another function the game overheats. Now let's say your car overheats and you and you don't have a spare radiator and you don't feel like waiting, just sitting here for it to fix itself. You can take the handbrake off, go into neutral, so now you're drifting, and look at the wheel and press F. So now you're able to drive, pretty much drive your car as so long as you just press F and you can walk around with your car. Sometimes it goes flying and you gotta be very careful because if you're going down a hill, you're sure. Well, look off in the distance, we have buildings that can randomly spawn. So before we die again, we're gonna go take a look at that and inspect it. And you'll notice there was a grinding sound. That's because you can actually screw up your gears. Well, not destroy them, or is where implementing has not been added to engines and stuff. But. See, look, so that's an uh, ideal stop. So now it's just a good measure. Because I don't know how much longer it'll take us to all die, considering how much time it was last time. But inside here, random loot will spawn. You can find a few things. They have, port most buildings have the little porta potties out back. Sometimes they have stuff on the roof. Look, and here's a moped I mentioned earlier. This takes a, well, uh, 97 to 3% ratio of gas to oil. And you can pedal this, press space to remove the thing, and then you just hold uh, shift and W. And theoretically you can press I to turn it on, but since it's not the right mixture of anything, it's not going to. So pretty much when stuff like that happens, I like to just get off. And since we saw a like, tank of gas in there, we can very simply go over and pick it up. And when it's time, we'll bring the Skoda engine over and we'll steal a bit of gas from that. I'll show you that the moped works. Just for efficiency's sake, we're going to do that. Make sure it's empty and we're going to... Drop it on the ground. Now, this is a very, very fuel-efficient machine. I mean, it's, it's quite magical, actually, considering how much this game drinks fuel, if you're not careful. Uh, I and a few other people have had to drive for up to, like, upward to 30 kilometers using the starter motor and first gear in one of the cars just because we didn't fill up on fuel or we couldn't find any. That was mainly the earlier versions of the game. Fuel was a lot rarer at one point because they tried to nerf it and they nerfed it too much, so. Yeah. Also, if you take your engine out, you lose all gearing ability, so you have to be careful of that. Now, if you want to not come to collision with this, you hold Q. And look. 3, 97 to 3, and now we can just bring this back and... Oh look, no oil has drained out of it because it was such a minuscule amount needed for here. So, that's good. Now we can just get on and make sure that... And since we turned on the ignition last time, we don't have to do anything. And it's a singular gear. There's not much you can do. 
You can break, and that's about it. You can hook the thing there, and you can sort of take a speedster start, but I wouldn't recommend it. Because you can just turn off the ignition and shift and just start faster. That's the better. Hello, now onto the detailed section featuring the vehicles. First off, we have the Icarus 280. This is a dual carriage wagon bus. Accordion, not wagon, part of my bad languaging. Now, this can also spawn in the 260 variant, which used to be a mod. That is important because you can find it, and I believe it also comes with a 5-speed manual transmission compared to this, which is a programmed in uh, automatic. There are also mods that adjust where exactly the seat and, well, steering wheel is. Usually, the seat would be over here with the wheel. But because I have the left-hand drive mod on, some cars will spawn left-hand drive like this. To get into the Icarus, you simply crouch and find, go underneath the uh, bumper and you'll find a green button. It's not on this one because this is left-hand drive. Which means that I need to go spawn in a correct size. Either way, usually this is not... The doors are not over here. They're just orange, so... Discrepancy here now. That is one of the perks of this mod. It's very, 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 very buggy and glitchy. So usually there would be a green button under here that you press E to use. But since that's not working, we're going to just use an alternative method. We're going to look, and this fuel tank, you, this bus is a diesel, runs on diesel. And under here, you have compartments for storage. So, self-explanatory. I mean, it's a compartment, you can flip the lid up and down using the mouse button. And that's about that for that side. Now, over here we have the engine compartment and another fuel tank. Uh, it's a uh, joint one, but it's still the same. This is the bus engine. This is the bus radiator. Bus engine, compared to other engines, requires 10 liters of oil instead of the regular 5. You can come into the buses and you can crawl around through them and get into it by. <sighs> getting into the engine compartment. Sorry for the interruptions, this usually does not work as horrible as it does. So just same as getting into attic, control, and W, hitting space a bunch. Here is the bus. This would be on this side here and the stick would not be here. So you can press these buttons to open the doors. Here's the speedometer and other important gauges. Over here is the handbrake, so just press space to remove it, and simple. As always, I, hold W, control 1, usually you just need to control 1 once as it's a 2 speed automatic, usually. Actually, how many gears is It's, okay, this is a 3 speed manual, obviously. So let's use this bus to get to the next car that we will be looking at, which is... Actually, a very good question, because I forgot. But we're gonna, just going to use E to escape from the vehicle. We're going to go over here. After I get this bus out of my way. It appears that the bus is in my way, and I'm going to have to crawl under it. Just my luck, isn't it? Next, we have the Skoda 180, I believe. It is a four-stroke, and its radiator looks like this. Its fuel tank is not at the rear here, but rather by this front quarter panel, right there. Press E to open and close. This is a four-door, four-speed manual. Right hand, uh, left-hand drive. Front trunk space very simple. Usually there's a spare tire. Lada 2101. Front engine, four-stroke. This is the third most powerful engine in the game, besides the bus engines and the tanker engine, but we'll get into that. Fuel tank is on the right side in the rear. Plain turn space, usually also a spare tire. Lot of 2102. 
just a estate version of the 2101. Your tank is in the same position. Both of these are real wheel, all these three are real wheel drive. Over here, we have the Dacia 1300, I believe. Uh, front wheel drive, run engine, and the fuel tank is back here next to the license plate. This is a three cylinder, very weak, and is the fifth most powerful engine in the game, I believe. Also a four stroke. Over here, we have the Trabant. Front wheel drive, two cylinder, two stroke. The second weakest powerful engine in the game. So there's that to keep in mind, but it also does not require a radiator, so it cannot overheat. Very simple, right? Two door, some trunk space, very fuel efficient. For this, the fuel can is actually under here at the hood. It takes a hot bug, takes a 37% gas to 3% oil mix. Over here, the state version or the station wagon as we call it here in the States. Exact same configuration, but with a bit more space. Also, in all the states, the rear seat is removable, so keep that in mind. Next, we have the Babettas, modeled after a real life Babetta. Ibetta, not Babetta, whatever, same difference. Two stroke also, little moped engine down here. And I showed you in the previous clip how to ride. Over here we have the Vaz 2105, a lot of 2105, whatever, I don't care. Real wheel drive, second most powerful engine in the game. Four cylinder, four stroke, large radiator. Fuel tank is on the left side. Over here. Simple, right? Four door. Now we move on to the trucks. This is the IFA W50. It has a detachable hood, then you can remove the radiator, and you can see the engine. Now, this is getting very annoying, so I'm going to show you the sleep function. You do this by holding V. This will allow you to skip time about 24 hours in game-ish. And this is a four-cylinder. I always thought it would have been better as a straight six or something, but it didn't come like that in real life. And the dev kept it original ish and i'm just not i'm just very very picky with things so uh it comes in three variants the tanker variant which we see here it has a top uh cap over there to uh, fill it up its gas tank is over here and actually with the tanker if you have it filled with diesel you can move it over here open the tank and well position it right you can have an infinite supply of fuel almost these rear areas have physics locks so you can put something there and it will not move here we have the katona variant it's essentially a housing unit for storage no physical lock unless you have the mod in there this is a five speed so instead of the usual four gears that you would get in the cars you have five in here so useful to know so those are the first two then there's this one this is a flatbed this one is special because when you have the engine running, as I will show you, you can use this lever to raise and lower the flatbed. Very simple and useful. And this also has physical lock with a mod, if I remember right. These also use the bus wheels, so yeah. Here's an attachable trailer. There's the flatbed and it's attachable. Attachable tone attachment and attachable tanker attachment. Over here we have the most recent addition to the game, the Volkswagens. This is a first gen rabbit with the 1.8 GTI engine. The creator doesn't care that much. This game canonically has a lot of issues. So ignore it. This is a four-cylinder. I get it. it. looks like a Boxster. It's very stupid. Now you have to be careful because there's two variants of this. You have a diesel variant, which is this one, and you have the gas variant. Now, gas you can know because it has the air filter. Diesel, it does not. It has the box. 
Other than that, they're essentially the same. This is now the fastest car in the game with the most powerful gas engine. This is the third most powerful diesel, but the second most uh, fast car. You can swap all the engines, and on the gas versions of the Rabbit, no, Golf, you have a attachable, detachable sunroof. Fuel tank is on the right side, over here. On the pickup, it's over here, on the left side. This uses diesel, remember, because it has the box instead of the air filter. The front grills are on both of these cars are also removable, so keep that in mind. These both have four gears and are somewhat fast. And that's about it that you need to know for the cars. Diesel, gas, this is also four strokes, my dad. The IFAs are also diesel, four cylinder. Lot of 2105, four stroke gas, real drive, the Veta, two stroke, one cylinder, real wheel drive. Strabant, front wheel drive, two stroke, both of them. Dacia, front wheel drive, four stroke. Lot of 2101 wagon, four stroke, Rear wheel drive, a lot of 2101. Four stroke rear wheel drive. Skoda 100. R, I think. I have no idea. Rear engine, rear wheel drive, four stroke. Icarus 280. Rear wheel drive, mid engine, diesel, six cylinder. This takes 10 liters of oil and 10 liters of coolant. And you can access the compartment under here. And that's about all you need to know. You also need to know that middle mouse button is actually just holding down the scroll wheel. That's something a lot of people get confused with. This is the starter house. Nice little look around. Here's the destruction I've caused by using the spawner mod. And that's about it you need to know. From here you can pretty much figure everything else out. And this also means that this video was cut short. So, thank you. Have a good day.